So, you guys, I'm working on more artwork for my gallery wall. I know, we're doing a lot of wall stuff lately, but I'm like all in. So this is where we are. So I wanted some, this is like all about dimension. On this project, I'll be creating dimension in a different way. So my plan is to um, stain the frame. So I'm gonna frame it out. Um, I'm gonna paint the inside black. And then we're gonna use a couple of pieces of transfer from one of my favorite transfers. I'm not gonna open my tube, you guys, because I've cut this thing to pieces and I'm afraid I'm gonna jack it up. But this is the Franz Botanical Transfer. And I'll also be using Wise Owl's Entomology Transfer. Enough chit chat, let's hop over and get started with the actual project. The first thing that I want to do is I want to um, stain my frame. And and I'm just using one of my Paint Pixie. This is my French tip brush. I'm picking this one today because on the inside of this frame, um, I want to be able to really get into those corners really easily. And so the Paint Pixie brush makes that really easy. So I'm going to rub that glaze um, into my wood grain. And I like to do a section at a time. You don't want your glaze to dry on your piece. You just want to leave it on there long enough for the wood to absorb um, the pigment from the glaze. And that's it. So I'm going to wipe that back. It was on there for maybe, I don't know, 20 seconds. Not a long time. Long enough for your wood to absorb it, but not long enough for it to... Um, dry on there and look how beautiful that color is you guys and it's gonna pop even more when I seal it okay so you guys see how easy that was now we're gonna paint the inside of our piece black and I'll be using wise owls chalk style paint um, for this one in black uh, one of my favorite colors I know I'm so boring sometimes but um we're going to paint the inside of this. Now, of course, I'm going to have to be more careful with this, but I'm just using a regular craft brush, and I'm just going to cut in. Um, I should use my Micro Edge brush from Wise Owl, but y'all know I don't have no clean brushes, right? <laughs> How many of you are like me? Like, seriously. I need to clean all my brushes. So I kind of shift gears a little bit, you guys, right in the middle. My plan was to do, like, a standard paint of this back panel but I ended up doing more of a wash and so I wiped up a lot of the paint that I had laid down and then I used my missing spray bottle and I missed it a lot of water and then I dried it and what it's done is created a different um, look that I would have gotten if I would have painted it so I have two transfers from the fronds um, transfer I think I'm gonna use this one that's a really pretty green and I think that the scale is appropriate for the size of this piece. Now we're doing all this in preparation for the star that we're gonna be putting on here in a few minutes. And so I'm gonna put this transfer right here. And I like my transfers to like come in off edge. And so I'm gonna hold up this stem though cause I don't want it to adhere to my frame. That's where we are so far. The next um, part of this project is actually the, the fun part for me. And this one's gonna be a really quick demo. This is one of those things that's like super simple, but that's really, really impactful. And so we're gonna put a butterfly on this piece, but rather than just transferring the butterfly straight on the backing, I'm actually gonna transfer it onto this cardstock. For this part of the project, we are literally going to transfer this butterfly directly onto our cardstock. And so I'm going to put him here in the corner because I think that's going to make it easier for me to cut him out. So now that I have him cut out of the cardstock, I'm actually going to bend him, his wings up, right where his body meets um, his wings. We are just going to take him and I'm going to put a dollop oops, of hot glue. Um, on his body and I want to put him right here and that's it you guys isn't that so cute and so now you have a piece of dimensional wall art before I get started let's get this cleaned up because there's quite a bit of fingerprints on there so I want to use the eye chart for this one because I want to have that eye 
right there in this frame. But I also know that I'm gonna need to use a piece of this paper for this other frame. So I want to make sure before I make a final decision um, that I'm gonna have enough paper for both pieces. That's gonna be really cool in here. So let's do this one first. Um, I'm going to set this in here. And just like I always do, you guys, I'm gonna use my finger to kind of score the edges so that I know exactly um, where I need to trim my paper. And so for this one, I'm gonna have to trim pretty closely, right? Because I don't have um, a lot of room. I really don't want to have any brush marks on my glass. So I think I'm gonna use my watercolor brush, you guys. because you're going to be able to see that through the glass and so um, let's let that rest and let that dry and you guys see how on the back you don't have any bubbles or anything um, it's because of the felt um, squeegee it really does help you to squeeze out any of those bubbles that you would normally see that form underneath your glass now this is one big fern right here but I'm actually gonna just take one I'm gonna take this little leaf, just the tip of this little leaf, and I'm gonna use that for this specific project. And I even think I'm gonna take this little piece of topography that's right here and use that as well. Of course, if I do like that, I think that'll be better. Let's do that, we'll use this one. And when you get your transfers, you guys, you always get this little stick to um, burnish your transfers. So you'll get one of these in each of your transfers. I always save mine um, because I have a lot of transfer bits. And it's always nice to have one of these handy. And we're going to layer our beetle right over the top of that. I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to go around and just trim any excess paper off of here. I am really focused on um, the sides of my of my project. So I'm, I'm cutting on the sides. I'm not cutting down like this um, because I can use the edge to help to guide my blade and I'm more likely to get a nice crisp trim this way. Look at that you guys. Isn't it so awesome? I love this piece. It's gonna go perfect on my wall and because I didn't paint white behind the paper There is a level of transparency that still exists there. It's not completely opaque, which I am really liking that as well So to get started Let's do our painting first so that can dry. I love the velvet on the back of here But I just cannot reconcile this color with what I have going on in my living room. So I'm gonna do a really thin coat of Abyss over the top of this velvet and it won't feel like velvet anymore, but it won't matter, right? So I have some cardstock here, you guys, and it's not like super thick. Um, and I found that this is perfect for when I wanna make like three dimensional um, pieces using my transfers. So let's use the big one. So we'll use him and what we're going to do is we're going to transfer him onto um, this paper and then we're going to fussy cut him out. And so this is a burnisher and it comes with every transfer and you just use this to rub 
the transfer off of the plastic, the backing, and onto your surface. And you can use these on furniture, home decor projects, craft projects. They're really, really versatile. So now that my transfer is on my card stock, you guys, I'm gonna fussy cut it using my fussy cut scissors. You guys know I love these scissors. So now I have this really cool um, death moth that I can use and the reason why I put it on the paper though is because I want to give it some more dimension and so just being able to fold it up like this and put it in my frame it just makes it so much more interesting than having it be, just be um, transferred flat on the back. I am going to go leave the back of this just in case it peeks out. Um, it'll still be pretty and I'm just like painting on a thin coat of the adhesive onto the back of my paper once you get your um, your surface is all tacky right now I'm gonna put my um, gold leaf on there or actually this is like copper leaf gold leaf variegated I don't know it's like a big mixture of stuff and I'm not gonna use like a ton because um, it spreads around really quickly this is actually probably too much but we'll we'll start here and if we need to add more we will it's not a big deal so I'm gonna take this and just kind of pounce my gold leaf on there and I like to do this on paper too you guys so that if I have any left over I can scoop it up and put it back in my package because I don't want to waste this I got a little sizing on the front so some of my gold leaf stuck on this side it's actually kind of cool. So my backing is dry, you guys, and I'm ready to adhere my butterfly. But remember his wings were a little wider than the frame. So I got to figure this out a little bit. Ugh, I hate to sacrifice those wings. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to round them off a little bit so that it's less noticeable, maybe, hopefully. So, I'm going to glue him in, and because he's on this cardboard, he's going to have some dimension. So, I'm going to figure out and get him on there just the way I like, and then I will put the frame on, and this guy will go on my gallery wall. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. We'll see you guys next time. You guys have a blessed day. Remember, um, anything that I did here today, you guys can absolutely do it. You can do this. You can do it today. 